you. And there he is. He currently runs in uh, sixth place. Scott Pruitt out on the circuit. Firestone Tires, Patrick Racing back. Under full course yellow, Michael Andretti's led from the start. We're ready to go back to racing as we're live from Miami. And look at this. Here are the leaders of the race after this yellow. They're all lined up together. Michael Andretti turns toward the green flag. Jim Swintall gives it a wave, and we're back racing. Andretti followed by Guzman, followed by Villeneuve. First and second are exactly as they started. Michael Andretti was on the inside of the front row. Guzman on the outside. But uh, Villeneuve has come way up. Uh, the grid and has having a fine performance. Then Sullivan, then Pruitt, there they are. Bobby Rahal and Robbie Gordon closing in as well. You know, it's interesting to think last year, Michael Andretti and Guterman on the same team last year, not the same team this year, running first now, or run first and second. Guterman last year, ironically, was ahead of Michael most of the times in the races. Yeah, they were bitter rivals actually last year, weren't they, Bobby, even though they drove for the same team. However, at the end of the year, it was Michael Andretti, who had two wins, and Guterman did not. Michael has really looked good today, Sam. He's, he's been in the right place at the right times. He's not abusing his car. He did rub the wall one time. That was just trying to pass, though. In eighth place, just behind Robbie Gordon. Oh, look at Whoa. Rahal. Boy, he almost lost it there. Just behind Robbie Gordon is Jimmy Vassar, who's now in the top ten. Then Stefan Johansson and Christian Fittipaldi rounds out the top ten. That shows you the track is getting just a little bit slippery. Remember, the more rubber you put on the track, the more slippery it gets. There's, that, nothing, there's no heat problems here. Is that just a little bit or is it a little bit? Well, a little bit. I mean, it's quite a bit right now. Well, Bobby, your point at the beginning of the show about how parts of the track are cement, parts of it are pavement, is very tricky for the drivers to go from one part to another. When the sun starts to get a little low in the sky, visibility problems happen, too. Christian Fittipaldi, a terrific pass down on the inside. So Christian Fittipaldi moves his way up. He's in the top ten. Christian Fittipaldi is one of the fast drivers on the track right now, you guys, because after all, remember, he had the black flag incident. He had the problem in the pits. He's really moving that car. I think we're going to see him move up. So Christian made that move around Stefan Johansson, moved up into ninth place. He's got Vassar right ahead of him now. That would be eighth place. And then Robbie Gordon just in that blue car. There's Gordon just disappearing at the bottom of the screen. So it'll be interesting. I think Fittipaldi is going to pick off two fairly big names, two American drivers here in the next couple of laps. He's charging at the back end of Jimmy Vassar, who has had a great weekend here. New team for Jimmy, driving for Chip Ganassi. But Robbie, now there's Robbie Christian Gordon worrying is, him to death. You see Robbie Gordon there going by first of that group. He's going to be on the home improvement show with Tim Allen March 28th. You might want to watch for that. So Christian Fittipaldi moving up. Stefan Johansson's not really happy with the, the pass that was made. I mean, it was a good pass, but I think he wants to get right back around him. Boy, when Christian pulled out there, was going to pass going into the chicane. I thought, well, wow, I've got to see that if he goes through with it. Christian Fittipaldi at the back of Jimmy Vassar. Christian said, well, he was going to get a lot of tips from his nephew, Emmo, but so far he's done much better this weekend than Emmo has. It's the other way around, Sam. He's the nephew. Emmo's the uncle. His I uncle, hate to sorry, you on that. Sorry, exactly. <laughs> and I, I do think that when they get out to Phoenix, Uncle Emmo uh, is going to be very helpful to his young nephew. We've got to help Sam well, and Kingsley, don't we? I don't know about the word helpful. I think he may show him a thing or two. Yeah. So watching this ongoing battle, revolving around Robbie Gordon, Jim Vassar, Christian Fittipaldi. And keep in mind also, Robbie Gordon has the hard tires on his car, the hard Goodyears. Goodyear has two compounds here, a soft compound they use for qualifying and a harder compound for the race. Sometimes, even though it's harder, it's still a faster tire. I love this angle. This is looking back from under the rear wing on Robbie Gordon's car. See Fittipaldi peek out there as they came through the chicane. Let Pruitt know he was there. In the straightaways, the cars are not really running faster than the ones behind like you see there. It's just that you're going faster and they separate more, but they gather back up in the sharp turns. That's Vassar just behind, then Fittipaldi. Vassar, of course, has changed teams. He's now with the Ganassi team. He was with Jim Hayhoe's team last year. Doing a good job. 
I think this shot really shows that, that accordion effect that happens into a corner. When the lead car gets under brakes, it looks like everybody's going to pull in and pass him. And the lead car is first back to acceleration, and it evens back out. True, it's somewhat... Whoa! Wow. Jimmy Vassar just jumps to the inside all of a sudden on Robbie Gordon and gets him. Best pass we've seen today. I mean, I know Robbie Gordon didn't expect that one. And behind there, Christian Vittipaldi rips by Gordon as well. Now you've got to ask yourself, is there something wrong? There's no. Johansson closing in on Gordon. No, I, I don't think, think it's just the harder tires. I don't you? think, well, I don't think there's anything wrong. I think it's just a matter of like, sometimes guys get caught a little bit lackadaisical. You call it going to sleep a little bit. No, because look, once Vassar got around Gordon, he's really started to pull away. Here comes Johansson trying on Robbie Gordon's back end. No, I think that's just the difference between the softer compound tires and the harder compound tires which Gordon is wearing. And that's more, some of the, more of some of the good stuff that we are going to see all season long with the two tire manufacturers being in this. Yeah, Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Paul, throw the tire controversy right out the window. That's not the problem with Robbie Gordon. How'd you like to be in the cockpit of a car with a throttle sticking? That's what Robbie Gordon's involved with now in the Cummins Valvoline Special. He says every time he just nails it on the gas, all of a sudden it sticks and stays hung up. No problem at all. We saw him pull to the side. He came off a little earlier. There's Stefan Johansson. And uh, obviously, whatever problem he has, obviously, whatever that's, problem that's he a, has is terminal. Yeah, that's a 94 Pinsky car. There's, there's, uh, there's no accidents or anything like that that we can see. It's just probably an engine or a transmission problem. Well, I, I caught a glimpse of him slowing down just a few moments ago while Jack was speaking. Here we'll been, get a look at it. He had been running in 10th place. Stefan, of course, the Swedish driver with the background in Formula One, drove for Ferrari. That's, a, that's also a 94 Penske car. Oh. Makes one wonder right there the problem happened. It's last year at Penske cars. You wonder whether they got all the stuff that little Al had last year on that car, don't you? Well, we're just a little over halfway here. Johansson out of the race, Jackaroot. Well, Paul, Bobby Unser still hasn't lost it. He surmised that it was a transmission. That's exactly what Stevie Johnson radioed in to Tony Bettenhausen. He says the transmission's gone away. Stevie Johnson, our nickname from Stefan Johansson. There are other nicknames. We won't use them here, right, one, Bobby? One good race driver, too. I really respect and admire that guy. He's really taken under the American scene, too. Back to the leader of the race. We haven't seen much of him, and that's because he has been so powerful here at the front of the field. Michael Andretti, now four seconds out in front of second place Mauricio Guzman. There comes Guzman off the corner. But look, he's being challenged by Jack Villeneuve right now. And waiting in the wings is Danny Sullivan and Scott Pruitt. Bill Neff, remember, in the blue and white car, was a rookie last year, but he won at Elkhart Lake. He had a brilliant pass there near the end of the race and secured that win for him. And today, he is one of the fastest cars on the track, probably second fastest compared to Michael Andretti. You know, we're over halfway into the race, and these guys have not let up on this battle right here the entire distance. So the price of racing is going to get pretty rough as we get near the end here. So there's Mauricio Guzman. Jack's just behind him. We could be due for stops any time now. Michael Andretti has gone 23 laps since his last pit stop, and several of the crews have started to lay out the equipment for the second and what should be the final pit stop of the day. And Michael peels off and heads into the pits. He's in the very first pit, Jack Aroot. And Paul, all he was yelling on the radio as he came in is right front, right front. They seem to think that maybe he had a right front go down, so they elected not to push the window any further than they had to. You're right, this should be the final stop for your leader. But boy, talk about living under, oh, now he's, he's killed the engine. The engine is dead, Paul. Oh, they've got a broken control arm on the front of the car. On the right front of the car, there's a broken control arm. Tom, reach down and pick it up. That's the side of the car, of course, that hit the, wall, the wall earlier, so it makes you wonder if perhaps this wasn't something destined to happen. Of course, it's so easy to touch a concrete wall around here. This is really, really sad. Michael, at least from our vantage point, has done such a good job today and really controlled this race entirely. Yeah, I'll there's the you. arm that's broken. That's a, The day is done for Michael. They may get him back in the race, but not the lead. Mauricio Guzman is now the leader. This is very bad luck for Michael, but on the other hand, it's very good luck that this didn't break in a way that put him in the wall out there on the track. Exactly. Yes, you're absolutely right there, Sam. That's so for, sure. for the first time in his IndyCar career, Mauricio Guzman is the leader of the race. And there he is. Second and place now is Villeneuve. Third is Sullivan. Pruitt is fourth. Bobby Rahal is fifth. And the Pac West team is now one and three, a new team. So now, 
With 25 or 50 laps complete, we are moving up with a brand new leader in IndyCar racing in the person of Mauricio Guzman. And we talked about new faces. They are very definitely at the front of the field right now. You know, this is really working itself up to be a good race. There's Guzman right there, Delano right behind him, and a whole bunch right behind them. Certainly the international flavor is being borne out. Those are in the Pac West team. Brazilian. Jack Neff with one win in his career so far, that at Road America last year. With a promise of many more to come. We're not going to sell Danny Sullivan shy. You know, he's in third place. Danny is racing. He's really become a racy race driver right now. So this is what put Michael Andretti on the restart up against the wall and broke the suspension member. We'll be back. Back live in Miami as Bobby Rahal continues his pursuit of Scott Pruitt and Danny Sullivan in a continuing fight for third place. Interesting new bulletin came out this morning from IndyCar as we take a look at the running order after 52 laps. The most interesting part is that that determines the length of the race. It is scheduled for 90 laps or according to, oh no, car into the wall and trying to look and see what the damage may be to the front of that. That's Ribeiro. That's, that's Ribeiro. Yeah, car number 31, Ribeiro. It's really hard to see it when he's all in the tires like that. He's okay, but I think that car is probably done. Remember, he was in an incident earlier. Now, yeah, let's get been... back to this 6D.5. The race can end at the completion of 90 laps or at two hours. And we're going to cut very, very close to that. Very close to that. So Jack Aroot and Gary Gerald, starting with Jack, does that, does that affect strategy now? Well, Paul, taking a look at my end of the pits, down with Robbie Gordon and Raul Boisel and Christian Fittipaldi, and, mo and most importantly, the Ray Hall Hogan team of Bobby Ray Hall, they all say that they have adjusted their strategy, and this full course yellow that we have just gone on to plays right into their hands. Most teams are going to elect to come in now for what should be their final stop, assuming that this race will go two hours instead of the advertised distance. Now, if all of a sudden the race speed picks up, these drivers could have to make a third stop. Let's go down further in the pitch to Gary Gerald. And waiting anxiously for his drivers who are first and third, Bruce McCaw. Now, Bruce, we're talking about the possibility of this becoming a timed race. Is that entering into your strategy now? Well, that's not our strategy yet. We're just running to stay out in front. You've got right now, running first and third, you've got Mauricio in here in the pits getting serviced right now. You've got to be terribly proud and excited about what this, this uh, team is doing. He's watching him closely. You've got to be terribly proud and excited about what's going on. Our team, the PacWest team, has done a fantastic job all winter getting ready for this race. We've, we've had a year now to get organized, and we're just 